Ruslan recently sat down with an ex-Satanist who was devoted to magic, witchcraft, and the Satanic Church. But after having what he claims was a vision directly from God, this radically changed his life, and now he is fully devoted to serving Christ. Now, in today's video, we're actually going to dive into this deeper, and he's going to talk more about this vision that he had from God that radically changed his life. What was your experience like as a Protestant? How long was that? Mm -hmm. And what was the tipping point to go? Uh, was it was it the papacy? Was it like, what was the thing that went that made you go, okay, I'm Protestant, I'm going to church, I'm active, I'm doing things, or were you not super active? So I was, um, I, I was Protestant in the way that how I had like kind of seen my mom evolve and okay. how I'd seen lots of other... I'm from out west, right? Like the Wild West, uh -huh. Utah, Wyoming, Montana. A lot of Protestant Christians, they're, hey, I don't need to go to church. Okay. If okay. I don't so there's not a big pro a practice emphasis this on This is faith. a Bible study, you know, Bible study over church. So we see here, guys, that his kind of upbringing with the, the view of Protestants is, hey, where I come from in Utah, you know, the Wild West, they're not practicing. They're not kind of living it out to where they're going to church and fellowshipping with the saints and and having that time it, it's more of just kind of a personal relationship thing when it came to protestants but then he talks about how he went into a catholic church and had this mary in vision and we're going to dive deeper into that but before we do ruslan kind of ask him some more questions about his upbringing to kind of see what the transition was from protestant to Catholicism. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, so there was a window where you were kind of going to Protestant church. Yeah, or not yeah. Really? There, there, so I have been to like um this church called the Rock. They were like, but they were a rock and roll church. Ah, uh, okay. And that turned me off. That did turn you off. It did. I okay. didn't like it. I okay. was because I'm going to shows my whole life. Clearly, he says, you know, when it comes to his Protestant upbringing and and going to the church only twice, you know, a couple times, he says. Uh, he just was turned off by it because it was a very rock and roll kind of feel. And that's just not what he was after, especially growing up in his type of environment where he was going to these very intense rock concerts, going to a church. He's like, this just isn't the place for that in his opinion, which I can actually agree with on him with this is saying, yeah, 100% man, I don't believe that church is meant to have a rock and roll kind of church feel where God and Jesus are cool and hip. There is a place where when we go into a church building, guys, where we're fellowshipping with the saints, we're gathered together with the body of Christ, and there needs to be a reverence and awe for that. But sadly, a lot of churches like to use worldly means to draw people in. But what you draw people in with, sadly, you have to continue to draw them in with. But Ruslan is going to ask him some more about this, and he's going to kind of go into more detail on why this was more of a turnoff for him. Cool as Christians to come together and enjoy music and stuff, but it just for like a Sunday, mm -hmm. it, I, I was like, well, I want more. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I what was happening was I was seeing Muslims praying in New York mm -hmm. on the street, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that's that's what I want. Mm. I want reverence. I want mm. I want sacredness. I want get down on your knees in the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I just wasn't getting that from rock and roll church. And how long did you go to rock and roll church? I, I've been, I'd been in just a couple times. Okay. Just a handful of just times. Just a handful of times. And I was kind of like, ah, this isn't for me. Got and it. then, um, some time went by and then I, I just felt called mm -hmm. to go to a Catholic church. Mm -hmm. And I just walked into one in the middle of the day once. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize what they were doing adoration. Now we see here, he's talking about how he, he would see Muslims and he was just Oh, they're praying on the street. Like, that's what I want. That's the kind of relationship that I want with, with God. Now, we have to be careful here because that's a very legalistic type of relationship that Muslims have with their, you know, quote unquote God. That, that is very legalistic. They have to do those things in order to obtain their heaven. And I'm being very brief with all this, but. Um, this is not something we should look at and go, that's beautiful. That's what I want to do. No, because it's very legalistic on that side. Yeah, man, it's, it's great if you're, hey, I want to cry out to the Lord at any point during the day and just pray and talk with him. 
and, and not care about what's around me or who's around me. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not the heart of Muslims when they're doing that. Then he talks about how he walks into this Catholic church and how now we're going to get into this vision that he says he had from the Lord. Um, what is it? What is adoration? Adoration is when, uh, so the Eucharist is the true presence of Christ mm -hmm. according to Orthodox mm -hmm. and, and Catholics. Mm -hmm. And so um, you take the Eucharist and you put it into like uh, uh, a, a reliquary or whatever, and it, it stands and then so jesus is in the room with you mm -hmm. but there's no there's no um service mm -hmm. he's just there present with you and mm -hmm. people come into that room to pray mm -hmm. to cry mm -hmm. to be close to god mm -hmm. to read mm -hmm. the bible in the presence of god mm -hmm. to read anything mm -hmm. to listen to music like basically you just use it as a ter as a time to get some real personal worship in mm -hmm. no mass no no someone else telling me a homily no someone else singing it's it's my personal relationship with god in the presence of yeah. him and it's do you then take the eucharist moving. at this thing or no what's that do you then take the eucharist at this point no no okay. no so no just you there. just you just show up to be in the presence of god okay. and you leave this is where i will disconnect from catholics um, he's talking about the Eucharist and he goes into this church service and that's what they're doing at the moment. Now they're not taking, you know, communion or Eucharist, but it's, it's there on the pulpits on the stage. And that's actually supposed to be Jesus in the room. Jesus is physically there because he is the bread and the wine. So all, all those things are, are Jesus and you just go in there in his presence and it's just a place of prayer and just time with him and all of that. We're going to disconnect because of course, you know, the presence of the Lord is, is near and he's with us. But to say that that's actually Jesus in the room, like physically there, we will have a disagreement with that, but he's going to kind of go deeper on how all of a sudden he enters into this church and sees this vision special yeah and so i didn't know though mm -hmm. i just walk in and you know catholics or christians are down like that he's let me this is weird tattooed guy come in and i sit in the pew and um this is a uh a spanish parish mm -hmm. And, you know, they have like a vibe they go for. Yeah. And so the there's like, you know, painted statues uh -huh. and like it's really beautiful. And there's uh -huh. all these flowers. And I'm looking at Mary and I'm kind of like, what's the deal with like Catholics and Mary? Mm -hmm. And I'm in this church. For you. And then I look over and I, I decide like I'm going to try praying. Like, hey, God, I'm here. What's going on? And I immediately was overwhelmed with emotion to the point that like, have you ever if anyone here has ever had your heart broken where you're so emotional and it's so painful and heavy in mm -hmm, your chest mm -hmm. and you're like that is heaving sobs i was crying like that mm. and then um i saw mary appeared to me mm. i had a marian vision and she literally just was close to me like your eyes are closed and she's in my your eyes are closed and okay. i'm trying to pray and talk to god and i open them and she's literally standing in so front of me open your eyes the way your open eyes are my open eyes up, and there's mary i'm having standing. like a psychedelic experience Whoa. what'd she look like um so i can't remember her uh -huh. i can only remember how she made me feel interesting i just remember looking at her and not and seeing a woman and seeing her features but not not seeing anything but like like i was seeing love uh -huh. like pure love and wow. light and 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 goodness he steps into this church building and he all of a sudden is is at this time where they the eucharist is out and he just starts weeping and crying out to the lord and sees this vision to where his eyes were once closed he opens them and he's actually seeing mary the mother of jesus standing in front of him now he doesn't remember details about her but he just says all he felt was like love and life and, and peace and all these things and then he's gonna say what that ends up leading him to do i i just remember wow. the, it, feeling this overwhelming feeling and of course i have like a mother wound i have all these things mm. and and i remember for the first time in my life feeling totally and completely safe mm -hmm. and taken care of and like okay mm. and it was uh you know it was so life-changing that at that moment i was like i am dedicating my entire life to being the best catholic i can be and how long ago was that that was mm, beginning of 2023 and so he 
devotes his life to being the most devoted Catholic of all time. There are concerns with the Catholic Church and their beliefs. And, and one of the big ones, guys, that Protestants and Catholics are going to really disagree on is how an individual is saved. With that being said, guys, as a Protestant, listen, I'm going to be one who stands firm on saying salvation is a free gift of God and we cannot earn it. Our good works do not save us. That is clear in the scriptures. Now, do Christians produce good works? Yes, because we have been born again. We have been given a new heart, new desires, new passions. Of course, that's going to flow out of us. That's just the evidence that we have been born again. But those good works are not what save us. Clearly in John chapter 1, verse 12, John chapter 3, verses 16, verses 18, verses 36, clearly lay out how one is saved. Acts chapter 16, verse 31, Romans verse chapter 10, verses 9 to 10, uh, and even verse 13, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. Guys, these scriptures beautifully lay out how an individual is saved. But the Roman Catholic Church does reject this. And when I say that, it's the official position of the Roman Catholic Church is that a person must believe in Jesus Christ and be baptized and receive the Eucharist along with other sacraments and obey the decrees of the Roman Catholic Church and perform materious works and not die with any mortal sins and go on, go on, go on. There are so much extra with salvation when it comes to the Roman Catholic Church that do cause for concern. And we need to be willing to say that is a concern. 